Hey guys, welcome to Charge Back Forward. My name is Terrence. And I'm Big Mike. After years of requests, we're finally have gotten around to it. We're going to do it proper. That's right, guys. We're going to do the game room tour properly and right in its finished form. This is going to be a multi-room tour. Uh, fans of the show, you'll know that Big Mike has quite the impressive room. Anybody that's new to our channel, welcome and get ready to be delighted. This is a really special space. Big Mike. <laughs> All right, so the first thing you'll probably notice in this game room tour is that all the games are complete in box. And that stresses from the uh, my point of view that games to me are, um, are they're more than just the data on the disc and the cartridge. You know, I've been collecting games for basically my entire life. Uh, so to me, games are like it's the production, the art, the creativity, everything that comes together to make this game be. And so to me, that means box art everything uh one of the uh, the plethora of reasons i'm not really a fan of digital distribution is because i love everything that the the game entails uh number two you're going to notice um several sealed games and <laughs> the reason for that is uh most not all but most of the games i bought and just never got around to playing so uh how I many games you got uh right now we're we're well over the 2600 mark actually so let's put it this way <laughs> if it's not open and he wants to play it Maybe sometime before he dies, but yeah. if you think about 2,600 <laughs> games and giving each one of them a fair shake, that would take a lot of time. That's what retirement's about. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, and the other thing I wanted to do is, I know like on a lot of these tour videos, um, people will say, ah, these are just people showing off their collection. Uh, not true, not true at all. Uh, I constructed this game room kind of for everybody, and what I mean by that is, this game room to me is like a living museum. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is there's not just games piled kind of everywhere haphazardly. There's everything's in order, there's artwork, there's statues, everything is situated the way it was meant to be to put on display. And that is for everyone. I love having people come over and enjoying themselves in here. And now this is basically me sharing my passion with everyone out there. Because uh, since I can't have you all come over as much as I'd love to... Party at Big Mike's! <laughs> this is the way to do it. So it's not showing off at all. It is... I. This is literally sharing my passion with everyone. And this... How long has this game room been in this iteration? Like this current setup? Obviously it's evolved over time, but what are we looking at? Uh, the way it is right now, very... Just very recently. Because it's... it's the game room has been an ongoing project since the day I moved in here. Uh, you know, I've been here for four years working on this, and every few months I change something or adjust something. And I can honestly say, right now, this is the best and most organized it's ever looked, and probably ever will look. This is uh, the reason why one of the reasons why we're doing this giant tour is because a people have requested it, and b this is like we'll call this like almost like the grand finale now of the tour. It's 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 pretty much this is the way it's going to look now until I basically buy a bigger place until he buys a bigger place <laughs> and this becomes a basement as opposed to a room right or maybe not even a basement flooding is a very uh yeah it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be on the top floor but uh it's great that we get to share this with you uh thank you everybody for over the years supporting us and subscribing following us on facebook and twitter commenting below uh we've been a bit lax lately but i kind of i kind of like watching the comments become organic without us kind of guiding it, uh, especially some of the most recent ones we've done. So keep the comments coming, and if you haven't already, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. It's a great tool for us to communicate with you guys. Uh, I'm really trying to get Big Mike uh, to get a new phone so he can start uh, <laughs> he can start uh, an Instagram account that's actually for the show. It's kind of weird having my Instagram where there's the odd picture of video games and then it's like ridiculous <laughs> photos. But I'm working on that, guys. Peer pressure, please. Peer pressure, peer pressure. But it's time. It's time for you to experience what pretty much everyone has experienced the first time they walk into the game room, which is bewilderment. Um, tears seriously people have kind of broken down not like <laughs> sob but you kind of see them get quiet and they kind of go into a corner you know they see something that they like they remember and um personally you know thank you big mike for sharing this with everybody and uh and for me i don't have to have a video game collection because uh, <laughs> some friends with this asshole right here right. <laughs> so guys without further ado uh this is going to be a multi-power video so stay tuned to the end of the video where we'll have links to all the subsequent videos Anybody that ever said that our tours were not detailed enough, <laughs> your wish 
is our command. Yeah, that's going to be corrected. So uh, I hope everyone enjoys it, and uh, I'm really excited to do this for you. Okay, this is going to take about 20 hours, so let's get to it. Yep. <sighs> hey everyone, Big Mike here, and I am super excited to share my passion with you. This is my game room, and those that know me best know that Alice in Wonderland is my favorite story. So Alice, welcome to the rabbit hole. Okay guys, so here's the first corner of the game room. This is one of the first things that greets you when you walk right in. Uh, starting at the top here, we've got some Final Fantasy X-2 art and a couple statues. Actually hidden behind here is my little Fallout 3 Collector's Edition. Uh, we have Nina from Tekken and scrolling down we have some Final Fantasy uh, X characters there. And down a little bit further here, we have like what I call my Sega shelf. We got my super super rare Panzer Dragoon statue down there. Uh, another super rare Final Fantasy, sorry, Fantasy Star Online, and Space Channel Five. And down another level here, we have some very statues from different characters from everywhere. Actually, there's a Yu-Gi-Oh uh, Wizard character sitting there. And down at the bottom. I have some Play Arts Mass Effect figures, which, Play Arts, here's the deal. Uh, expensive action figures is about all they are. They're very, very nice, but they don't stand up worth squat. They constantly fall over, so right now they're just haphazardly leaning in there. Uh, <laughs> I can't get these things to stand up for the life dependent on it. Then, next to all the, uh, the statue figures here, I have a, um, a collection of uh, import Sega Saturn box sets. Uh, there's you know, Groove on Fight, Street Fighter vs. X-Men, uh, Fancy Star, uh, Samurai Showdown 3, Samurai Showdown 4. So some really nice, uh, really nice box sets there from Japan. And then the shelf over, I have first my Catherine Shrine, we'll call it there, with both special editions and all three uh, Catherine statues have been released. And then below that, I have my the rest of my import Saturn games. Uh, a lot in there that uh, we never got over here in North America. Saturn, even though I love the North American Saturn, Japan, they just got treated like gold. Tons of stuff over there. Then below the Japanese Saturn games, I have all my 3DS stuff. Uh, not a lot there, you know, it's building up. But make sure I got the special editions there like Code of Princess and Project X. And then finally, got myself a Vita. So below that, I have my uh, Muramasa Special Edition in Ragnarok and Gravity Rush. And then we have the Neo Geo X Mega Pack. And the shelf beside that then is finally all my Wii games. And despite me not really enjoying the Wii at all, I seem to have a very large Wii collection. Um, I pretty much have all the basics there, like the Kirby and Zeldas and Red Steels and Resident Evils and whatnot. And of course the Mario 25th Anniversary Edition. All right, next we have my Neo Geo MVS games. Now these are all in specially made cases. And like any good Neo Geo collection, I have all the standards there, like Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury, King of Fighters, you know, Metal Slug, Samurai Showdowns, World Heroes. Um, and just as an, a little added bonus right at the end, I have some Neo Geo laser discs. Because if there's two things Japan loved, it was laser discs and Neo Geo. Neo Geo! <laughs> Alright, and now down here is my retro gaming paradise, we'll call it. Um, now I know a lot of people uh, only want to play retro stuff on CRTs, but I got super lucky and this, this LCD is actually super good at processing standard definition signals, so retro games look just fine on it guys, so no, don't worry. Um, okay, so down here we have a North American PS2, a Japanese PS2, a PCFX, I'm currently using an FC Twin to play NES games. 
an N64, a PC Engine Duo, Neo Geo CD, 3DO, Genesis and Sega CD, Dreamcast, hooked up using a VGA cable, the original Xbox, a Super Nintendo, Sega Saturn, and down on the floor here we have a, yes, a, that's a PSP hooked up to the TV, and a GameCube bareback and a Wii. Now I am missing uh, a few systems hooked up here, like a CDX, uh, my Turbo Duo, uh, my 7800 and a few other systems, but there's really, as you can tell, just not enough room, but, and this alone took several hours, like this is, every single system here, I believe it's like 16, 17 systems, are currently hooked up the proper way, touch of a button on the screen, using component VGA S video, the best way possible, and uh, I swore a lot hooking this up, so I'm glad it turned out the way it did. Okay, next, we have something that's very, very special. It is my crown jewel of my game room collection here, my classic Snatchers. And down below that are some Time Lock reproduction cartridges. And then six very important Sega CD games. We'll be getting to the rest of the Sega CD collection soon, but those are the six important ones right there. And up here we have some, yeah, some more special edition boxes, uh, some little Ezio statues standing there. But more importantly, below that is my collection of my second favorite system of all time, my massive, massive Dreamcast collection, uh, which covers both North American, Japanese, and UK releases, and homebrew as well. Up here, some more statues, some more fighting girls there. You're going to see a trend with all these girls eventually. Uh, we have some SNK going on here with some Samurai Showdown love. That one's got a nip slip, don't tell anyone. Then down below here, we have more King of Fighters characters. And then a uh, kind of a mix there, with some Persona, Ona Chibara, and whatnot. And then below that, some more Capcom love with my girl Sean Bon. Now we come to a very, very busy corner of the game room. Starting off with a lovely Fantasy Star Online poster. We have now entered my Xbox 360 collection which at this point is absolutely overflowing. Just tons and tons of special editions, uh, a few hundred games that cover basically every genre. You know, the system's been out for eight years now, so there's a lot to choose from. And then way at the top here, hidden behind that shadow run for the Mega CD, there's a Turbo Express, followed by all three special editions of Mass Effect, and, uh, yeah, maybe a, um, you know, special edition of Connectables. <coughs> okay, starting up here, we have my uh, Street Fighter bus. And down below that, those of you who've been watching the uh, show for a while now know I'm a huge fan of Japanese 360 special editions. So there they are, and I gave them as much room as they need, because those beautiful boxes need to be put on display. Then I have some regular Japanese 360 games, followed by the rest of my North American releases, which, as you can see, those shelves are now 100% full. No more room. Good thing we're at the end of this generation. Unfortunately, yes, that is a special edition of Aliens Colonial Marines, followed by more Japanese 360 special editions, and then some of the more recent Dreamcast games that have come out. Some, quite frankly, in this just the last uh, few weeks. Then below that, we have most of my PSP collection. Not all. I have a few more games I want to show you guys. They just keep them in a different area of the room. Now, this standee, which I have my lovely Model 1 Sega CD, which unfortunately doesn't work, but it's so beautiful. It's got to be on display with the ban from retail copy of Night Trap. Crazy. Hard to believe that was that offensive way back then. And we have some, uh, some Tecmo love here with some Team Ninja designs. Then some of my sci-fi girls there, Samus, Kudabakaya Mass Effect, and the Dead or Alive girls, and a few more sci-fi girls down there as well. And there we have my Neo Geo MVS, with a little Terry Bogart hat on there. Signed by someone, right? Yeah, signed by uh, SNK's lead artist. Uh, I, I w had the pleasure of meeting him, uh, whew, that's probably about seven years ago. Then we have my rack of, uh, actually at the top there, it's my SNK vs. Capcom uh, 
uh, figure collection and a Final Fantasy VIII statue. Then my Turbo Graphics PC Engine, PC Engine CD, Turbo Graphics CD, Super Graphics, everything and anything NEC is right there. And then some uh, some big box PS1 games, if anyone remembers. That's the way they used to come back in 95. And one of my favorite items in my game room, my Street Fighter the Movie Machine. Because no one has a Street Fighter the Movie Machine other than me. And we have my uh, Street Fighter 15th Anniversary joystick, nestling safely on top of my Steel Battalion. And here we have the rest of my Sega CD collection. As I've said many, many, many times, the Sega CD is the most underrated and underappreciated video game system of all time. And below, I have a few systems that couldn't make the cut to be hooked up. 7800, Japanese Saturn, and a Turbo Duo. Starting up here, we have my Street Fighter 25th Anniversary Box, which is a bunch of Street Fighter busts. A little, uh, little Blaze Blue Love. And a few more Shining figures down there. And the remainder of my PSP collection. Some nice, big, beautiful box sets. We love you, Exceed. We love you. Then we have my PlayStation 1 games that are not in the big box. Followed by way more than I thought of uh, DS games. I really didn't <laughs> know I had this many DS games until I organized them. And I can't forget the Virtual Boy. Now we're over here. We have my. Uh, there's two members there of the Triforce of Terror, the two CDI Zeldas, uh, some more PlayStation box sets, and a little bit of Resident Evil uh, POP. And then my original Xbox collection. Looks like with a few uh, Dreamcast cases shoved in there for the <laughs> some, Yeah, some homemade uh, Dreamcast cases as well. <laughs> so up here I have a few of my... And one of my personal favorite items, my Welcome to Raccoon City street sign. All right, there we have uh, some original Marvel vs. Capcom 3 art there, autographed, and my Leaning Tower of Nemesis. And an entire, absolutely entire cabinet dedicated to the Shining Force series and the, uh, the brilliant art of Mr. Uh, Tony Taka. And starting up there, that's actually really special to me. That is a, uh, everyone knows that Lollipop Chainsaw was my favorite games last year. That is a promo sheet that has been autographed by Canadian Tara Strong, who did the voice of Juliet Starling. Most of you out there probably know her as the voice of Harley Quinn. And my uh, 99 Nights promo piece, followed by some uh, random statues there, uh, Lollipop Chainsaw Valentine's Day edition, and some more Resident Evil love, including some boxed games that we only got digitally over here. Thank you, Japan. And my plethora of PS2 games. And that big empty spot in there is some games that are on loan right now, <coughs> Terrence, but that's okay. <laughs> For the record, they're uh, Big Mike's DDR games. <laughs> I've kind of gotten back into that, trying to... And I have no rhythm, so it's okay. You can borrow them as long as he wants. <laughs> I'm trying to shoo off the All right, little autographed cosplay picture back there, and two giant Resident Evil statues with uh, Jill and Chris. Then more Capcom love, There's a lot of Resident Evil resin statues in there, and a whole bunch of Street Fighter. And we've done a video on the Yuri statue back there if you guys want to check that out. And the two most attractive sisters in video game history. 
And just for the record, yes, I actually have two male statues. There's Dante and Buddy from Dark Void, whatever the hell his name is. Nolan North does his voice, that's all that matters. It's, it's the Rocketeer. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny how you put the only male statues. Well, it's not the only male statues, as you get Leon and Chris up there, but these guys have been relegated to the basement. <laughs> And this nice little display in the center of the room has all my Resident Evil card game sets. And then we have... Ah, we can't forget Alice and a little Cheshire Cat. Um, but then we have my North American Sega Saturn collection, where working designs is heavily represented. And down at the end there is my 3DO collection. Very, very expensive 3DO collection. And I believe there's one uh, one of your multiple copies of Lucian's Quest down there? Yes, that's one of my Lucian's Quests is down there. Pissing uh, 3DO aficionados off all over the world. Hey, if you got $1,500 or $2,000, could make my call. <laughs> here we have uh, two incredibly large statues. We've got Mina here from Samurai Showdown and Rocket from Sucker Punch. Not really video game related, but since that movie was pretty much like a giant video game, she deserves a spot in the game room. And yes, down here is my Mega Man 9 press kit, uh, which I actually just recently got as of just a few days ago. Um, one of the benefits of working in the industry is you make a few friends along the way, and uh, someone I've known for 12 years set me up and uh, Capcom themselves uh, mailed that to me. So very, very happy to get that. Then down below, I literally have a hodgepodge of items. Uh, some old PC games there in the nice big box, including Leisure Suit Larry, uh, Bioshock 2 Special Edition, and a non-working 360 wrapped up in Resident Evil artwork. And here's the last corner of the room before the walk-in closet. I have my, uh, my Resident Evil art that was commissioned for me, which I've uh, told stories about and will easily tell again. And below that, a, uh, an autographed picture from um, a very famous cosplayer. And then my other copy of Lucian's Quest, E. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> below that is my, uh, my PlayStation 3 collection. Um, uh, thankfully, the PlayStation 3 actually, uh, we were just discussing this before this video, the last couple of years have been really good for that system, so some great exclusives on there now. And the GameCube. Love the GameCube, so misunderstood. It's too bad only like really three companies figured out how to make games for it. The three companies would be uh, Nintendo, Capcom. Capcom, and Factor 5 before, um, uh, well we all know what happened to Factor 5. Yes we do. Yeah. <laughs> and there's social commentary for you there. I, uh, you see most of my game room, you know how much games I buy. Still only two Wii U games. Uh, okay, over here, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo CD. And some uh, Neo Geo Pocket. And some regular Game Boy. And some Resident Evil action figures. I rarely collect action figures, but you know, it's got the Resident Evil name on it, so that must mean I have to buy it. Hey, and here's my little shrine to Suda51. My promo Lollipop Chainsaw Box and Sylvia from No More Heroes. Then we have the uh, very uh, What's the word we're looking for here? Anatomically correct. <laughs> Solange from Goat Princess. She's got some really chicken ass legs though. <laughs> and uh, more shining figures because my other cabinet got too full. And my little uh, dedication there to uh, Operation Rainfall with uh, some Last Story and Pandora's Tower, both US and uh, North American launches there. And some big NIS uh, box sets for the PlayStation 3. Those, a lot of those are actually directly from their site was the only way to get them. All right, then on the last side of this display, I have the uh, Tomb Raider special edition there for the 360, the uh, Last of Us special edition, which I only found out after there was another edition that was like US only. So if anyone wants to send me the uh, pandemic edition, you know, please feel free. PM them. <laughs> and, uh, down here I have a uh, Assassin's Creed photo of my future wife and uh, Jessica Nigri there. My girlfriend is just fine with that. She does understand that I will leave her for Jessica Nigri. That's fine. And over here, uh, my X68000 games. Just a few. I just started collecting for that. 
And this is kind of cool. This is actually promo a promo box for uh, bar uh, Zombie Barbecue for the DS. This is not the final artwork they used. Actually, I don't even remember how I got this, but I've somehow got my hands on that one. All right, we have now entered the walk-in closet. Starting off with a little bit of art up there, some you know some Soul Calibur and Shining Force and Toshinden some Order of Ecclesia Castlevania art followed by my uh, extremely rare Japanese Resident Evil figures especially that Rebecca which I got dirt dirt cheap because some woman was selling off her husband's stuff <laughs> all right then uh, you, <laughs> uh, some more uh, Japanese uh, posters there followed by some more PlayStation 3 exclusive box sets love those NIS box sets and my meager collection of NES stuff I know my, my NES collection is uh, considerably smaller compared to most out there. But that's okay, because I got a copy of Cheetah Man too. <laughs> Alright, there's a Metroid art that I won at an auction. And my uh, Fantasy Star Universe poster. And some very, very classic uh, Resident Evil 2 action figures, followed by, uh, as far as I know, like the only Devil May Cry uh, Trish figure ever made. And some more statues and some more square arts, uh, square play arts action figures. Those, thankfully, uh, don't fall as much as the other ones. And my wonderful Amiga Street Fighter with that fantastically beautiful cover. All right, now we have some Super Famicom. I don't know why I have so many JRPGs for the Super Famicom. Not like I can read Japanese, but but those covers are generally better than the American ones. Then the N64. In all honesty, probably like my least favorite Nintendo system, but hell, there's Ocarina of Times on that system, so you gotta give it some respect. And then the very controversial PC stuff, which I uh, said something three years ago that still haunts me to this day. I have now accepted PC gaming into my video game collection, so no more hate mail, please. I've done it. <laughs> Alright, now, my favorite system of all time, the Super Nintendo. Way too many good games to list off there. But I can guarantee you, the RPGs, and the action games, and anything with Capcom or Square's name on it, is definitely in that collection. All right, once again, showing off my love for Resident Evil. Some nice art back there, and all my Hot Toys Resident Evil statues. Followed by, uh, there's some Muramasa and Odin Sphere love. And surprise, surprise, more Shining Force. And there's the rest of my Super Nintendo. Followed by some, uh, actually those are No More Heroes postcards that were only available in Japan if you pre-ordered the game. So, and some Japanese related manga and Mario Paint. So there's some, uh, those are some Japanese exclusive Catherine posters that were only available, I believe, if you pre-ordered the game. Uh, some Odin Sphere art. And photos of my, uh, my future wife there, Jessica Negri, and the Olipop Chainsaw cosplay. Uh, Darkstalker art. Actually, that piece of Darkstalker art was featured in the Darkstalker tribute book that was put out by Udon. Followed by the other Catherine poster. And my PCFX games, which about half of those I cannot get past the title screen. Not one word of English in the whole bloody thing. Alright. Now time for some of my least favorite systems, the Atari Jaguar. Needless to say, only six games on that. And the rest of my PC and Intellivision collection. Alright, from the crappy Jaguar, we go into the awesome Sega Genesis. And before you ask, yes, there is a copy of Pure Solar in there. Alright, a little bit of Master System stuff.
followed by uh, my very meager 32X collection, but let's be honest, there were too many 32X games to begin with, and my original Sega CD games in those horrible, horrible cardboard boxes that would fall apart if you looked up them the wrong way, and a little bit of Game Gear and Virtual Boy down there as well. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the game room tour. <laughs> Check me out, boom, in this shit. Uh, Good work, man. Good work, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and, and to James, our cameraman, who did all the hard work through this video. Who was soaked in sweat, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be going out to the swimming pool immediately to cool down. Yeah. Stay tuned, guys. Following this are the links for all of the individual videos for the tour. You guys have a lot to watch. <laughs> you've asked for it. You've got it. So, guys, if you haven't already, subscribe, rate, comment, Twitter, Facebook, all that shit. <sighs> We're about a quarter of the way done filming at this point, so uh, thanks a lot again, guys. Links are coming up. Be sure to check them out, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.